In this travel vlog, we will explore the Nile River on a four-day cruise. Watch until the end to learn about the construction of the High Dam, explore ancient Egyptian temples, and tour breathtaking tombs at the Valley of the Kings. Before booking a Nile cruise, I recommend that you consult with Valcourt Travel Agency as they will recommend the best ship options. Based on our budget, we opted for a modern looking cruise, which included an English speaking guide, all transfers to each temple and ship activities. The total cost was $425 per person. And although it did include all meals, tips were an additional cost and be prepared for everyone to ask for tips. The first place to visit were the Nile River dams. In 1902, the low dam was built to reduce flooding for crops. This was not sustainable and eventually a high dam was built for water irrigation and power generation. Unfortunately, these dams displaced over 60,000 Nubian people, but their heritage still lives on today. Still located in Aswan, the next stop was to visit the Philae Temple Complex and travel by boat was our only form of transportation. Once we arrived, our tour guide explained how the complex is made up of several temples and shrines dedicated to deities. Around 1279 BC, a temple was built for the worship of Isis, her husband Osiris, and their son Horus. Once the high dam was built, several temples were partly covered by Lake Nasser. However, UNESCO moved the entire complex to an island in order to save it. Next, we were off to visit Komombu Temple, which was dedicated to the crocodile god and the falcon-headed god. The layout combines two temples, each side having its own gateways and chapels. So, we're on the way to Abu Sabel and we had to wake up at four in the morning to do so because when we get to the cruise, they tell us that there's a three and a half hour bus ride that we have to take. Apparently, there are two cruises you can go on. One goes from Aswan to Luxor and the other one goes from Aswan to Abu Simbel. So you have those two options because of the high dam. Cruises on one side, cruises on the other side. We're tired. He's tired. This is Abu Simbel, another temple complex that was relocated to higher ground as the dam was built. During the reign of Ramesses II, the twin temples were carved out of the mountainside. Carved into the walls is a depiction of the Battle of Kadesh between the Egyptians and the Hittites. Ramesses shows a more victorious outcome for the Egyptians, but the truth is the battle resulted in the first and earliest recorded peace treaty. A clay tablet of this treaty is currently located in the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. As a travel advisor, I highly recommend that you add Abu Simbel to your list, as its grandeur will blow your mind. On day three of the Nile cruise, we sailed north to the city Luxor, where we first visited Karnak Temple. This temple has varied architectural styles and Middle Kingdom pharaohs added structures during their reign. Statues of lions with ram heads lie at the entrance, symbolizing protection. The main god worshiped here was the sun god, Amun. The most majestic part of Karnak is the hypostyle hall. It's comprised of columns which were originally enclosed by a ceiling. The hall is elaborately decorated and tells the sagas and stories of the pharaohs. As we walked through the remaining parts of Karnak, I wondered how in the world did these people build such massive structures using limited technology. Leading behind Abu Simbel, this was the second most impressive site for me, so I recommend that you add it to your travel list.
my sixth grade teacher, Dr. Marilyn Harmon, showed me photos of coffins in the Valley of the Kings, and I was impressed by the Egyptian gold necklaces and bracelets that she wore. I've seen many tomb images, but nothing could prepare me for the beauty of the artwork carved into the walls, which were illuminated by lights. These painted scenes often depicted the Pharaoh's journey into the underworld and their new life in the presence of God deities. With two more temples left to visit, the Now Cruise group took a detour and visited a local shop. Here, we observed local men using handheld chisels to carve out small statues and stone tablets. Towards the end of our trip, we made our way to Hepshetzut's temple, which has three levels connected by ramps. The temple was named after Hatshepsut, the second woman to ever become a pharaoh of Egypt. Fun fact, similar to the Washington Monument in the USA, she commissioned Egypt's tallest obelisk, which is currently located at Karnak. The final stop was the Luxor Temple, which is believed to be the sacred site where Egyptian pharaohs were crowned. Before excavations began in the 1960s, nearly 1,000 sandstone blocks were exposed to salty groundwater, which caused them to decay. Overall, the Nile cruise was an enjoyable experience, but I'd say more so due to the people that we met along the way, like Shira and Guy from Israel and Emmett and his wife. If you enjoyed this video, do like, comment, and subscribe. I also encourage you to watch my other travel vlogs, which will help you plan your future trips.